Hi, this is Debbie Hodge with GetItScrap.com. I make scrapbooking process videos and I've been getting questions lately about how I digitally cut my papers. I recently made this page Happy Easter in a video and there's three mats, the pink paper, the floral paper, the pattern paper, and then there's two strips over here. And I cut things in several ways. So I'm just going to show you some of these basics. Because lots of times when somebody starts digital scrapbooking, it's assumed that you know some basics that you don't because nobody showed you. So let me show you a few of the ways I cut paper. One way that I cut paper is to just open a piece of pattern paper. This is from the Just Jamie Eclectic Easter kit from Pixels and Company. Drag the whole piece over to my canvas and I start thinking about where I might like to put it. And I'm thinking I want to back up this area. So I just cut a piece out of that using the rectangular marquee tool. That'll be in your toolbar. I'm using Photoshop CS3, but any of the Photoshop's have the rectangular marquee tool. So find the rectangular marquee tool. It's also stored with the elliptical single row single column so you'll want to make sure that it's the rectangular marquee tool that's chosen. Make sure that your feathering is set to zero otherwise you're going to get soft edges. And then I just draw out the rectangle that I think I want because I can still trim it down later with the rectangular marquee tool feathering set to zero and I'm targeting that layer that the pattern paper is on and if you press control J it makes a new layer that has just the selected area on it so there we go I've got my this piece of paper if I decide that I want it smaller I can always take the rectangular marquee tool select the area I want to cut away and press delete so again, you select what you want and press Control J to get that area on a new layer. And then once that's on a new layer, you can cut away with the rectangular marquee tool. Another approach that I use to cutting paper is to start with the pattern paper, the original piece. And this is by Dear Lizzie Enchanted from AC Digitals. And I draw out with the marquee tool. So again, it's this marquee tool, feathering set to zero. I draw out the area that I think I want and then use the selection tool, make sure the layer with the paper is targeted in the layers palette and drag that over to my canvas. So it dragged that size that I cut. And now if I decide that it's not the right size, I can use that rectangular marquee, draw a square around the area I want to cut away, press delete, it cuts it away, control D to unselect. Another way when I'm working with small pieces that I use would be to take the rectangular marquee and then draw out the area I want to keep and then select and I want to select the inverse, inverse. Shift control I will also do that so now first I had selected the the area within the marquee and then once I selected the inverse of that I'm selecting everything but that press delete and it takes away the surrounding area I don't use that when I have a big piece of pattern paper for example when I first pull this piece over I don't if I went like this and said okay that's what I want to keep selected the inverse and then deleted the problem is there's still stuff off the canvas. It's hard to get it all. See, there's all that extra. So I only use the selecting inverse and deleting when it's a small piece and I know there's nothing hanging off the canvas. Yet another way to cut paper is to define an area, create a mask, and then clip paper to it. So I've got this strip here and if I decided I wanted a second strip, I could use the rectangle tool. So now I'm actually going to draw a rectangle. It's going to be orange because that's the foreground color I've got selected right now. So I'll draw out a rectangle. It's that size. Um, so this is a rectangle and I can resize it. I can drag it bigger, drag it smaller, and once I decide on the size that I like, I get the paper that I want that size, drag it over, and now look in the layers palette that paper that I dragged over is sitting above the rectangle that I just drew and now you can do layer create clipping mask and you can also use alt control G to do that so that whole piece of paper is still on my canvas but the only part of it that shows up is the part where that rectangle is that I drew that's a clipping mask I've clipped it to it 
The benefit to doing that is if I decide I want the piece a little bit bigger, I can go to that rectangle I drew and drag it out bigger and it doesn't affect the pattern. I've still got, the, got it proportionally correct. Whereas with this one that I dragged over and cut out, I cannot do that. Things get distorted. And often what I'll do is I'll find that um, I've got a pattern paper that I like and that I want a different pattern paper. That piece that I cut can also become the clipping mask. So if I decide that this piece of paper that I cut, this wasn't a shape I drew, this was a piece of paper that I cut. If I decide I'd like that to be a different pattern paper, I could drag a different pattern paper over to my canvas. And now look, it's sitting in the layer above that one. And now I do layer, create clipping mask, and now that paper is clipped to the other paper. So that's another way that I use to cut papers. Another frequent paper cutting task that I use is to cut a shape or text away from a piece of paper on my page. So we've got this pink paper that I cut out and let's say that I want to cut, that I want to punch a circle from it. I'm going to uh, figure out where I want to cut that circle from. I'll go to my ellipse tool. Remember before I do rectangles, now I'm going to draw um, an ellipse or a circle. I'm going to press shift so that it'll be a circle. If I didn't press shift, I wouldn't have control over it being exactly right. So shift and then I click and drag out a circle. And now I want to cut this circle area. I want to punch it out of this pink plaid patterned paper. So I go to the layer palette. I look for the layer holding the circle and I control click on the square representing it in the layer palette. And I'm going to click on the eye to hide that layer because I don't want to see it right now. I want to see that it got punched from my pattern paper. I need to target the layer I want to cut it away from, which is the pink plaid paper, and then press delete, and it's cut it away. You can see it better if you add a drop shadow. I use Layer Styles by Celine Studio to do this. So I'm going to use the flat paper sh shadow, and now you can see that that circle has been cut away from the paper. You can also do this with text. I'm going to use the blackout font because it's got filled in centers and type hello. So say I wanted to cut my title out of pattern paper. I type the text where I want it to be, just as before we drew a circle from where we wanted to punch it. If it's not in the place you want to punch it from, you can drag it to where you want to punch it from. I will find it over in the layers palette, control click on the T representing the layer, hide the layer, target the layer I want to cut it from, press delete, press control D to deselect, and there was already a shadow applied to that paper, so you can see it's showing up nicely there. So that's how you punch away from paper. Here's a catch. Suppose you want to punch it out of this paper right here, this sewing pattern paper. Remember, I have that sewing pattern paper clipped to another piece of paper. I have it clipped to this. I need to cut it. I need to punch it away from this lower piece of paper that I've got it clipped to. Or if I had drawn a rectangle, I would need to cut it from that rectangle. So let's say that we wanted to cut it from this floral paper right here. And that paper is clipped to a rectangle. So we'll hide the paper for a minute and we're going to want to cut it from the rectangle. Because the rectangle was a shape drawn out you can't do anything to it till you simplify or rasterize it. So I'm going to go layer, rasterize, shape. Some versions of Photoshop call it simplifying a shape. So now I can do something to it. So let's say that I wanted to cut, um, how about a custom shape? Let's say I want to cut a star or an, let's cut an arrow from it. So now I will create a new layer and draw out my shape. Fortunately that got drawn in orange so let me change the color. So I drew out this arrow shape and now I want to cut it from this rectangle. I'm going to control click on the icon for it in the layer palette, hide it, target the layer I want to cut it from, press delete, Press Control D to deselect, and then I'm going to add a shadow so you can see that I cut it away. Now, let's turn on this pattern paper again and clip it back to it. 
and that's how you've cut it from that. So I'm showing that just because with the pink pink paper I just had the pink paper on the page and so I needed to cut from that but if you've clipped your paper to a shape you need to cut it from the shape to which you're clipping your paper. As you get close to finishing your layout you're not going to want to keep all those layers. For example when we look at this floral paper we've got the whole if it weren't clipped to that piece I'm going to unclip it for a minute. The whole piece of paper is there and all the information for that paper gets saved in your file and it makes your file larger and it makes more layers to work with. So there'll be a point at which you know that that's the paper you want to use and it's clipped to the layer beneath and you would just like to cut it right down to that shape so you can merge the two layers. So remember I have two different layers that I've clipped. I clipped this sewing pattern paper to a rectangle and I clipped the floral paper to a rectangle with an arrow cut out from it. You can merge layers. You need to work, go to your layer palette stack and work from the bottom up. So in other words, I've got this paper right here is sitting lower in the stack than the floral paper. So I'm going to merge them first. If you don't, things get weird. So I will select the two layers that I want to merge and go to layer Merge layers. You can also use Control E. And now I'm going to merge these two layers also, the floral and the arrow. So, whoops. Though, I'm going to undo that now. Control Z to undo. I don't like to merge layers with the shadow on them because then I can never adjust the shadow. So I'm going to remove the drop shadow and then I'm going to merge the layers. And then I'll add the shadow on. Otherwise, I could never change the shadow. So this has been a demonstration of several ways that I cut patterned papers when I'm making digital scrapbook pages. You can find many more of my scrapbook page tutorials at getitscrap.com slash scrapbookcoach.